Hi everyone, I don't know whether you've noticed, but the um, yeah the planet seems to be a little bit on fire at the moment. Just a little bit. In California, for instance, they've had the most devastating wildfire, I think, in many years, if not their, their entire history. 81 people died, and thousands upon thousands of people's lives displaced and lost everything in the fire, destroyed homes. This has happened in other places around the world, in Greece in July, of course, 80 people died as a result of a devastating wildfire caused by what they called tinderbox conditions because of a long drought that they had seen. These change, this change in weather patterns is fueling this devastation, not just with wildfires, but also, of course, with hurricanes. I mean, America, has, I think, has had four once-in-a-century hurricanes in the last 18 months. I think we need to change the definition of once in a century if they're happening roughly every three to six months or so. This is going to get worse though. Remember, we are currently only at one degrees C above pre-industrial levels. One degrees global warming. And as scientists are predicting, wildfires in the Mediterranean, I assume therefore in America as well, will increase by 40% just at 1.5 degrees C. Why is that important, that 1.5 degrees C? Well, 1.5 degrees C is actually half a degree less than the current Paris Climate Agreement tries to keep governments to doing and to setting their targets towards. Of course, none of them are. Even two degrees is not enough, and they're still not hitting the target. This is serious. And it's got even more serious and even more press recently because of this IPCC report, which says we can limit ourselves to 1.5 degrees C warming and we can stop, it getting any, uh, stop the planet getting heating up any more than that. But we have to do a radical change in the way we, well, let's see what the report says. The report finds that limited global warming to 1.5 degrees C would require rapid and far-reaching transitions in land, energy, industry, buildings, transport and cities. Global net human-caused emissions of carbon dioxide would need to fall by about 45% from 2010 levels by 2030, reaching net zero around 2050. This means that any remaining emissions would need to be balanced by removing CO2 from the air. So not only do we need to go through this transformation, but we also need to do something to actually remove the CO2 in the air we've already put there through the use of carbon scrubbers and technology. And that report says we're going to hit 1.5 degrees if we don't change at our current levels within 12 years. Therefore, we've got 12 years to fix it. That's not a lot of time. If it gets hotter than that, what's the world going to look like? If we don't do anything, and obviously it's going to go past the 1.5 to 2 degrees very short time after that, what's the world going to look like? This from Live Science interviewed a expert called Demonocal, his name was. Climate change affects the ecosystems that provide food and therefore our security of food is linked to the security of those ecosystems. The oceans, for instance, provide people with about 20% of their dietary protein, Domeno Cal said. However, ocean acidification caused by climate change makes it difficult, if not impossible, for thousands of species, including oysters, crabs and corals, to form their protective shells, which in turn disrupts the food web. So, say goodbye to shellfish, in other words. On land, an increase of two degrees would almost double the water deficit and would lead to a drop in wheat and maize harvests. Less water, less clean water for people drinking it and obviously for those growing the food that we need. Northern latitudes may see a tempor uh, temporary boost in soy and wheat farming. I like this bit. Partly because of the warmer temperatures far, farther north and partly because increased carbon dioxide helps plants, plants grow. This is something that has been said on my videos many times. Oh, more carbon dioxide will help the plants grow. But an increase of two degrees, this advantage almost disappears for soy and entirely vanishes for wheat. 
NASA reported. If temperatures get too hot, then these plants are flowering, their growth can become stunted, leading to a decreased, a decreased or no edible food crop, such as corn or grain, NASA said. How often do ice ages happen? If temperatures get too hot when they... Oh, sorry, I've read that. It's not just the food that would be affected, of course. Our shelter would be as affected as well. As temperature warm and a warm as temperatures warm and glaciers melt, the corresponding sea level rise can destroy homes and cities. About 40% of the world's population lives within 62 miles of the coast. That's a lot. 40% within 62 miles. More than 123 million people, or 39% of the United States population, lived in counties touching the shoreline according to the National Ocean Service. Collectively, that is the single biggest investment at risk due to climate change as sea level rises. It's bad for business. If you're a right-winger who is saying, hey, fuel and fossil fuels are good for the economy, give it a decade. From 1901 to 1990, the average global sea levels rose just 1.2 millimetres a year on average, but from 1993 to 2010, the levels rose 3 millimetres a year. So almost trebled, more than doubled, two and a half times. In just less than a century. Then obviously there comes the energy problems that we'll have as a result of climate change. About 7% of the United States electricity generation in 2013 came from hydropower, which accounted for 52% of the nation's generated renewable energy that year, according to the Department of Energy. So that's a great, that's a green energy, getting 7% of the United States electricity generation. However, reduced snowpack and shifting rainfall patterns may reduce hydropower in the long run, Demano Cal said this is now threatening the american west and some european areas as well so a warming planet means it makes it even more difficult for us to move to renewable energy such as hydropower because of the shifting water patterns and then it comes to the health of us increases in temperature and changing rain patterns remember this is at just two degrees Increases in temperature and changing rain patterns are associated with the spread of vector-borne diseases, which another organism transmits between humans or from animals to humans, such as Lyme disease and malaria. Even if a vector-borne disease is eradically, eradicated locally in a particular region, the weather changes associated with climate change can lead to migrations of these vector-borne diseases to new regions. Great. So get ready for Zika viruses in Iceland. Furthermore, because of health concerns, some regions of the globe, such as parts of the Middle East and the American West, may become inhabitable to humans because of extreme temperatures. So, people won't be able to live in the Middle East. I know there are hot places such as Central America, uh, yeah, Central and Southern America. That's because humidity often increases with the heat at the index when both are high. The human body is unable to evaporate sweat to cool itself. If you're unable, unable to sweat, you, can't, you can actually die from exposure. Extreme temperatures can also lower productivity among workers. Again, bad for the economy. Extreme heat, especially in the American Southeast, may lead to a 3% drop in outdoor worker productivity, including among people who work in construction, utility maintenance, landscaping and agriculture. This drop is twice that of the productivity slowdown that happened in the 1970s, which likely occurred because of high inflation and economic instability, which of course will be factors that happen as a result of the climate changing and the globe getting warm, or warmer. Now all of these remember, this is just a 2 degrees C, which we would hit not long after 2030 if we carry on. This is really quite bad. Because if you think about it, we're at 1 degree C now. If you think about it, if you think the, the global water shortage is bad now, give it a decade or two. 
if you think that mass immigration from South America, from the Middle East, through Europe, through North America, if you think mass immigration is bad now, give it a decade or two. If you think the rising right, the right wing nationalism in America and Europe as a result, as a direct result of this mass immigration is bad now, give it a decade or two. Because that's all it's going to be. It's not going to be in our grandchildren's life, a lifetime or our children's lifetime. It's, we're going to see it in our own. Describing the future under a two degree warming is quite frankly apocalyptic. It's devastating. And here's the difference between the two. You can see just that half a degree between 1.5 degrees that we're going to hit in 2030 if we carry on the way we are. And these are best case scenario predictions by the way. Something could happen which leads to runaway climate change. Leads to all these predictions being way under how bad it will be. There is a lot, a lot of methane in the ice. Methane is, is much worse at trapping heat than carbon dioxide is. If that gets released, how does that build upon? It could, it could lead to an existential, sorry, it could lead to runaway climate change these are best case scenarios that we're looking at here and they're apocalyptic and that's just at two degrees if you think that is bad Donald Trump's own administration sees a seven degrees ri degree rise in global temperatures by 2100 if we continue down this path and we do not make radical changes seven imagine how bad that will be we have tragically built an economy based upon the very product oil that is not just causing all the wars on the planet because we have attached the value of our world's reserve currency to it. But we have built our economy based on the very thing that is choking us out of existence. And it has to be changed. And knowing all of this, <laughs> knowing all of this happens and knowing that we're heading for seven degrees and two degrees would be apocalyptic this is what Donald Trump responded when he heard that that report when he read that report this is what his response was I've seen it uh, I've read some of it and it's fine it's fine yeah I don't believe it no no I don't believe it that is that is the most powerful man on the planet, undeniably, the most powerful man on the planet, doing the equivalent of sticking his fingers in his ears and going, la 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 la, I'm not listening to you. That's what our leaders are doing about it. So this all sounds pretty awful, doesn't it? But as I said at the end of, I think, part two in this series I've done on climate change, there is something we can do to change it and I've noticed that just recently people have started doing it I don't know whether you've heard of the Extinction Rebellion yet but if you haven't get used to it because you're gonna hit start hearing a hell of a lot more from it and from movements like it because just last weekend the Extinction Rebellion basically shut down London. Shut down five bridges in London. Pretty much shut the city down. There were many arrests. 
Just want to read a little bit from this. Mass arrests resulted on Saturday as thousands of people and members of the Extinction Rebellion movement, for the first time in living memory, shut down the five main bridges of central London in the name of saving the planet and those who live upon it. From destructive overconsumption, runaway greenhouse gas emissions, and the ongoing failure of global leaders to address the compounding and intensifying threats. The social contract has been broken, and it is therefore not our only right, but our moral duty to bypass the government's inaction and flagrant dereliction of duty, and to rebel and to defend life itself, said Gail Bradbrook, an Extinction Rebellion organiser. To the Guardian. Tiana Jacou. Another protest organiser told the BBC that shutting down the bridges was, quote, not a step we take lightly, but if things continue as is, we face an extinction greater than the one that killed the dinosaurs. People are starting to notice that this is serious. We have tried marching and lobbying and signing petitions, she added. Nothing has brought about the change that is needed. We are peacefully standing up for the earth and for humanity, Cecilia B of Extinction Rebellion declared in a statement. People are dancing and singing and making new friends. This is a joyful rebellion and this is what the future looks like. We are facing an unprecedented global emergency. Extinction Rebellions separately states on its website and with the government failing to act on the planet's survival at stake the group says it's going to take everything we've got and it is because at the bottom and i love this on the waterloo bridge one speaker told participants this let's do what it takes good planets are hard to find people have started to notice that this is serious people have started to notice that if we don't radically change the way we fuel our lives the way we fuel our bodies through food it's not just going to affect their grandchildren's lives or their children's lives it's going to affect their own this is serious really serious they have realized it's going to take a massive overhaul of the way we live our lives to actually get this into check and to shape our future. But we can do it. As that IPCC report states, we can. The only thing that's stopping us is us. We cannot continue. We cannot continue to destroy at the moment, 27 million hectares of, fo of, of forests have been destroyed. 27 million hectares of deforestation just for the palm oil that is produced. Palm oil that goes in pretty much every fast food and every snack there is, but predominantly is actually sold as a biofuel. News flash, idiots! If you have to destroy 27 million hectares of forest to create this fuel, it's not a green energy. Don't call it bio. We are going to have to change our diet, the way we power our lives, and our, radically our transport system through a giant investment in green energy. And we the people are going to have to make them take notice of us and do something. Not just something, but do enough. Getting together in a room and saying, yes, let's get it to below two degrees, A, is not enough, and B, none of you were doing it anyway, or very few. The people are going to have to make them do this. And movements like extinction rebellion are going to get more and more loud as the years go on and i for one will be adding my voice to them i suggest you do too and i suggest most of all there's a key thing that we have to change if we are going to defeat climate change there's a key thing and it's going to be a massive thing to ch change as well because we are going to have to force them to change the global financial system 
itself so that the world's reserve currency is not based upon the very thing oil which is choking us out of existence I suggest we've got to have that as the primary goal if we are going to continue living on this planet and coexisting with it if you like this video and you want to see more please subscribe and click the bell below so you get a notification of when I drop further videos independent voices like mine I'm sure you're aware by now are being censored across all social media platforms so please like and comment on the videos that really does help the channel out and share the videos wherever you can to grow the audience if you can please support me on patreon you can do it for as little as a dollar a month I cannot do this without your help I rely on your donations thanks very much for your support it really is appreciated until next time, peace and take care.